Okay, here we are, back in the tech lab. Um, I'm going to do a little demonstration video of how to apply effects and how to use some of them. We're going to run through a bunch of them, but I have to first record something for us to work on. So I've got my piano going, and I've got uh, an audio track, so I'm going to start by recording uh, a little bit of both. Children go should give us something to work with. So here is our audio. This should still be working. Yeah, that's working. Good. I'm going to trim off the back side of that because I think it got my talking. Let's see. Okay, that should give us He was born, oh, born, born in That's good enough for what we're doing. I also have this uh, piano track. Great. Uh, so first I'm going to work on this audio a little bit. Uh, start with some things that it actually needs. So start with an EQ and a compressor. channel. Here we go. So, uh, in listening back, so the first thing is, this is I'm recording this through a terrible microphone, so I'm going to find some frequencies that don't work, and I'm going to chop them out. This is called subtractive EQ, because I'm subtracting uh, frequencies that I don't want. The way EQ works is you've got low frequencies over on the left and you've got high frequencies over on the right. And you can selectively change the volume of these frequencies. So you can turn up the high frequencies, that's all the high pitch stuff like tss, tss, all that stuff. And then the low frequencies, all the, you know, uh, pounding bass, and then everything in between, mid-range. So let me give you a little tour of the frequencies so you can hear what they sound like. I'm going to play this on loop. Baby, he
there's not a lot of low frequency information. Uh, there's just a couple of frequencies in the mid-range that I don't like. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take out some of the low rumble. Also, this has a spectrum analyzer. It's showing you the frequencies that are actually coming through for this piece of audio. If you look at the gray information that's coming up inside of the window. So you can see there's not a lot of low frequency information here and that's because of the way the microphone up here at the top of the computer is um, uh, designed. It's designed to not pick up a lot of low frequencies so we're not losing much here. Alright so now I'm going to choose which frequency I want to chop. Okay, now I'm going to boost a little bit, which is additive EQ. Okay, now we're going to move on to the compressor. We've talked a little bit about how compressors work, and I'm just going to start playing around with the settings until I find something that works for me. In fact, I'm going to go to the loud spot in the song because that's where it's going to be the most important. What I'm looking for is for this soft part at the end of the music to be about the same volume as the loud part at the beginning. with the compressor off. So you can see at the tail, the voice almost disappears. Because the difference in the volume from this beginning part and the end part is so drastic. Now with the compressor, it makes the loud part softer and then it turns everything up using makeup gain so that the difference between this part of the volume and this part of the volume are very close to each other. See, there's not such a drastic difference between the beginning and the end anymore. Now we're going to move on to the reverb. Just a little bit of delay. Let's use a simple delay. Put that before the reverb so that the delays are reverbed. I don't need nearly as much of this, so I'm going to pull the dry wet control down. Uh -oh. 
You can chop out blocks of audio that you don't want. You can listen closely for sounds that are sticking out, like here at the beginning. Hear that piano? Children. So you can just cut it. Children go where I send thee. There, where I'm playing the keyboard, you can just select it and hit delete. E. Too much there. E. How See how I got rid of that? E. How I can pull that back some. E. How if I wanted to zoom in, I could get a little bit better at finding the exact tail of that. Children. Okay. So you can go through your audio track and edit it that way. I'm going to undo that. The other thing you can do is an automatic kind of noise editing called a gate. So I'm going to drop a gate on here. I'm going to put it at the end, or the beginning rather. So that it's the first thing. So this noise, uh, what a gate does is kind of like the opposite of a compressor. It listens for incoming audio and the gate is closed. It doesn't let anything through until the volume gets above the threshold. So what we want to do is adjust the threshold. That's um, this control here. Adjust the threshold so that the soft sounds don't get through but the loud sounds do. Children go where I send thee. Children. Children go. Children, children go. Okay, there we go. I got the threshold way down there. So you'll notice that the piano part that we heard before is now missing because the noise is below the threshold. You can see it way down there. Children go where I send thee. Clicks. Children go where I send thee. Yeah, it's a loud one. Let's just find that spot. How shall I send thee? I right there. It uh, cut out some of the voice. I'm gonna send thee. I'm gonna send thee. I'm gonna send. So you can use the hold and release controls to determine how long you want it to hold after the sound drops below the threshold. And if I push that up some and push the release up just a little bit it'll make the tail of the gate closing a little more natural. I'm going to send thee one by one One for the little bitty baby He was